Hi, this is Lisa Johnson. Welcome to Make It Monday. Today I'm going to be showing you the rock and roll stamping technique. So here's the card we're making today. I'm starting out using um, so several colors. I wanted this to be a real colorful card. And with rock and roll stamping, it's best to use two tones or colors that really coordinate well together for your stamping. You can see here that I've used Raspberry Fizz and Hibiscus Burst for that first flower, and Reflection Blue and Water Lily Green for that second, Summer Sunrise, and Paris Lights for that third flower. Okay, let's go ahead and get, get to stamping. I'm starting off with a vintage cream layer. I'm going to be using Hibiscus Burst and Raspberry Fizz Ink. Beautiful Blooms too has a, a large array of blooms, but I like this particular shape for the project I'm using today. There's three blooms, three flowers with this particular image. I'm using the middle one first, the middle sized one, inking it with my hibiscus burst. I want to make sure I get a nice even coating in the middle there. And I don't want a lot of the raspberry fizz around the edge. I want to keep a lot of that brightness in the middle kind of makes it look like sunlight hitting my flower. So I'm going to barely roll it around the edges here. Just a touch. Real light touch too. See that? Real simple. Real easy. This technique is probably not n new to many of you, but there's a lot of new stampers out there. And maybe I do it a little bit different and you'll learn something today. Love that result. Now I'm going to use the smaller image. I'm going to ink it first with Water Lily Green and then Reflection Blue around the edges. These are available at the Pear Pea Tray Ink store as well. It's nice to have these additional colors handy, especially in cube form for easy storage. You know, I started off with a larger bloom on the top, and typically I like to put that weight down at the bottom, but I was, I was looking at my garden, and I noticed that the larger flowers tended to be taller than the littler flowers, and so I wanted to kind of shake things up a little bit on, on this card to make it look possibly a little bit more realistic. And you're probably wondering why I'm using a green with a blue on the outside. I'll explain that in just a second. I wiped off my my green, but whenever you go to yellow, it always tends to want to pick up that color, so I just stamp it off a little bit, take my cube, wipe it on my paper, and it removes any little cross-contamination that I might get on my cube there pretty fast before anything can soak in. This is Paris Lights that I'm inking this little image up with, and then I'll take Summer Sunrise to roll it around. And I want this one to be a little bit more intense. So if you notice, little, literal, littler flowers have a tendency to have a little bit more of that color consolidated. There we go. See all the different variations there? It's kind of fun. So now I'm going to hit, go ahead and add my leaf image. I'm using the same size leaf. I just kind of want that uniformity. Landscape palette ink is the green I chose to, to work with this. I liked that brightness of it. I'm strategically placing the leaves on this blue-green flower. Oop, gotta go back over it again. I love clear stamps because I want them to kind of set up a frame for my sentiment that's going to be going there. And we'll see what I mean when I get there. Little garden look. So I'm using dark chocolate with this Mercy stamp here from the Think Big Favorites number three. I love this font. I love the swirliness of it. 
think it's so inviting. There we go. Now in order to tie in the color, I'm going to add the little asterisks from the Beautiful Blooms stamp set, two stamp set to go right in the middle of that flower. I think that really makes everything kind of come alive there. Now I want to add, I want those leaves to kind of pop off the edge, but I don't want to try to straight cut it myself. So I take my trimmer and I trim a little top, a little on the bottom, and then I lift my lever up to see how much more I need to go forward and back. So when you see me go straight over it, it's not being engaged. I'm not cutting over the leaves. Don't cut your leaves. Lift and look. And I pull it out there and I've got my leaves are still intact. You can see here while well, I'll trim around everything. Isn't that nifty? So even with a rotary trimmer, you can kind of get in there close if you just take that little extra time. Another thing you could do if you didn't want to go through all that is just score where you want to cut and just cut that with your scissors. I'm just not that great of a straight cutter by myself, so I don't trust myself to do that. I love the dimension that this adds to have these little pieces kind of come off the side. To me, it just adds so much more of an eye-pleasing effect. Now I'm going to add a layer behind it of Raspberry Fizz. And I've kind of pre-cut it to make the, the sizes compatible, except for that little extra on the side there. Notice I haven't adhered it together. Don't, don't worry, I'm not going to cut my leaves off. <laughs> There we go, line it up, see where I want to cut it, then take off that layer that I don't want to cut my leaves off of, and trim. See, most people would go in with a straight edge and a craft knife here, but I, like I said, I want to save those little leaves. Some foam squares here to add some dimension to that layer. We need some bling, so let's add some rhinestones, some crystals to the center. Got my little Ziva ones sitting here next to me. I'll use the littlest ones and my scissors to help kind of line them up if I need help. I find that adding these to the center of flowers really gives them that realistic look. So there's that decorative panel underneath those layers. Hawaiian Shores, and I'm stamping it with newsprint, background basic newsprint in vintage cream. I want that vintage cream to mas ma match the vintage cream cardstock that I used. That's why I'm using that instead of white. I'm pushing a little extra hard because I've doubled up how many stamps I have on my, my ginormous block here. And I've also got a foam piece underneath my paper to add a little extra foam cushion for my stamping. Okay, so my paper is longer than my card base, my cardstock that I just stamped. So I'm going to line it along the closed edge because I don't want to cut near my closed edge. Just one piece of score tape, make sure it's lined up perfect. Now I've messed up on these plenty enough times, so this is the way I just, I don't put that extra adhesive there yet until I've cut that off, made sure it's lined up. If for some reason I've made a mistake, I just grab my heat tool really fast and just give it a quick little heating and it undoes the adhesive enough that you can pull it off without tearing your cardstock. And I'm gonna just trim up that little excess score tape there. Gosh, I love this stuff. There we go. Now it's time to adhere that finished front layer to the card base. 
I'm going to go ahead and use my foam squares to do that as well. A lot of layering, a lot of dimension. There we go. Getting it all lined up. And like I said, don't hesitate to pull it back off and try to put it back on before you push down if you don't get it lined up all the way. Alrighty. Got a finished thank you card. This is so perfect for somebody who's really been doing something great for you. A lot of little efforts been been put in. I hope you've enjoyed today's Make It Monday. Have a great rest of your day.